Welcome to the Taxing Subjects Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Norton, and today we're joined by Drake Software Vice President of Internal Operations, Jamie Gibson. Welcome to the show, Jamie. Thank you, Ryan. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, phishing email scams, specifically some of the new ones, too, that are uh, popping up that might be surprising to people, uh, especially if you're already familiar with phishing scams and how to avoid them. But we're going to cover uh, just the things that we're seeing, um, what's new, and then maybe some ways to avoid uh, being a victim of a phishing scam. Sounds great. Before we get started, though, um, could you briefly talk about your role at Drake Software and also with the Security Summit? Sure. So at Drake Software, I am the Vice President of Internal Operations. Um, Underneath that umbrella is Compliance, Fraud Prevention, and Business Processes. I am also one of the industry co-leads on the IRS Security Summit for the Authentication Working Group. Uh, The Security Summit was formed in 2015 by the former IRS commissioner. Uh, His name was John Koskinen. And um, what what the goal of the Security Summit um, started out to be was to prevent identity theft tax refund fraud. Um, IDTTRF is the acronym for it, if anybody's familiar with that. And the commissioner put a bunch of working groups in place. There's currently six of them. I won't get into what all of them do. Um, the, I am the co-lead on the authentication group, as I said, and what we are, have been tasked with is um, securing accounts, finding ways to uh, identity proof who people are at the time of their filing, and then also to um, come up with uh, particular aspects of a tax return filing that we can provide to the IRS and state taxing authorities to help them track fraud as well. So the security sum has been very successful, um, seeing a 42% uh, drop in self-reported identity theft and a 32% in confirmed identity theft by the IRS. I imagine that means that um, cyber criminals and um, fraudsters then have to evolve their tactics. Evolve and adapt. Adapt would be a good word to to, to use there. We've um, seen a lot less um, bots and auto technology involved in filing fraudulent tax returns. Um, So basically what the cyber criminals and fraudsters have to do is a more manual, more time consuming and more thought out process to file a a, a tax return. It's definitely slowed them down, hasn't completely stopped them. That's still good news though. It is good news. (laughs) So what, so what are, you kind of touched on it there, but what are we seeing this year? Um, like just your standard spear phishing tactics, or what are some of the things that uh, have been reported and um, that the Security Summit partners are all working against? Okay. Um, as we all know, it's tax season, and um, this is a big time for phishing emails that are directed at tax preparers, not taxpayers, where uh, the fraudsters are attempting to either gain credentials for tax preparers in order to utilize software, um, also attempting to install malware and Trojans, um, VPN takeover bots, any way they can either get into a tax preparer's computer in order to file tax returns or compromise their system in order to steal the taxpayer's data and then file it through a different software provider. Um, we, we also um, see a lot of, a lot of um, tax preparers whose machines are completely taken over via the VPN r- remote software. So um, those are very difficult to track because all the tax return filings coming to the tax software companies and the IRS and the state taxing authorities, they have all the characteristics of that tax return prepare their IP address, so on and so forth. So, All right, Jamie, well, what's what would be some of the new scams you're seeing? Is there something coming up that's more unorthodox that uh, we've never seen before, or is it just like a, a variation on a theme of things that we normally get? So something that's um, new and definitely still emerging, we've all heard of spear phishing, that's when the attacker sends an email to um, a recipient that looks like it came from somebody they know, may have some things that are familiar about it. Um, but there's also uh, an emerging, emerging scheme that some are calling laser phishing. An example that I would have would be, um, I have my first niece right now. 
very happy about it. I spend a lot of time with her. I post about her a lot on my social media accounts. I post a lot of pictures. Um, her mother is obviously one of my best friends. We're constantly liking or upvoting e each other's social media posts. So an example of what a laser phishing email would look like would be, it looks like it came from my sister. And it says, hey, I thought that you might want to see what your niece did this weekend. And I attached all of her pictures. I would probably fall for that if I wasn't aware of, of, of what to look for. So I go and I open the zip file, thinking there's pictures of my niece. And in fact, it's in a keylogger or a malware or some sort of software that is attempting to take over my computer. Yeah, and I think uh, one of the interesting things um, before we sat down to record today that I was reading about was that uh, Trend Micro in 2017 reported that uh, 90, I'm going to get this number wrong, I think it was 91 or 92 percent of uh, all successful um, scams like this were spear phishing scams. Yes. And um, I think that they were just seeing better results rather than just casting a wide net with just yes. getting a, you know, uh, some message about, hey, we need you to give us information without it being from someone that you recognize. Yes. So often with um, these phishing scams and spear phishing or laser phishing scams, um, they often try to get that, that private information or even just direct access to uh, maybe the person's bank account um, so that then they can just get money, whether it's from filing a uh, fraudulent tax return to have that money deposited in the fraudster's bank account. But I've heard that there's something very strange that has just started this year. Um, could you talk more about what this new and strange phishing practice is? I sure can. So um, around the first of the new year, uh, some taxpayers started noticing that tax refunds were showing up in their bank account. And they knew they hadn't actually filed their tax return. They didn't understand. Uh, they would call, contact their tax preparer who would say, no, I didn't file your tax return. And um, so it took a couple of weeks for the full scheme to really emerge. But what is known today is a lot of the tax preparers fell victim to a phishing scheme at some point in the past. It could have been this year. It could have been last year. It could have been five years ago. And the taxpayer's data was actually compromised from the tax preparer. And the fraudsters filed a fraudulent tax return, had the funds deposited to the actual taxpayer, and then did a phone call campaign posing as the IRS or as an IRS debt collection agency to recover those funds. And basically, the fraudsters received the funds from the taxpayer because they were not aware of what the entire scheme was. They thought they were returning the funds to the IRS. Yeah, I've, I have never heard of a criminal wanting to give someone else the money first and then try and to then, get it. And then try to take it back. That's fascinating. Yes, and it, it, it's definitely, um, a, the scheme is a direct result of some of the work that's been done within the Security Summit to try to use prior year characteristics of a tax return filing to identity proof the return that's coming in this year. What happens if I'm an affected taxpayer and um, I have received this erroneous, um, erroneously issued tax refund and I don't pay it back to the IRS? In the event you receive the erroneous refund, um, it's the taxpayer's obligation to repay the IRS. Um, there are steps that are in place and a lot of communication that's gone out from the IRS. Um, ultimately, any taxpayer that does not return the erroneous funds will be subject to actual IRS debt collection. So if you're listening, make sure you pay them back as soon as possible. Absolutely. You can mail a check back to the IRS. You can visit an IRS field office. Um, the IRS will never ask you to ACH funds back to them. It'll always be a form of physical payment in the form of a money order or a check. Well, so we've talked about some of the scams that are currently occurring, um, maybe some old, some new. What are some things that tax professionals and taxpayers both can do to try to prevent falling victim to um, phishing scams. 
The most important thing is to use a reputable email provider. Um, a reputable email provider will be scanning the headers, doing a lot of behind the scenes work to track IPs and known fraud addresses to have that first line of defense so the emails don't even get delivered to your inbox. So that's the most important thing. Second most important thing is um, when you have an email that has links or buttons in it um, that will be launching um, a URL to hover over the link, try to verify that the, the address that it's taking it you to is legitimate. Um, alternatively, the smartest thing to do is to visit the website directly by opening your browser and typing in the URL. Unfortunately, links and buttons came around because URLs can be this long right now, and it can be really hard to type in the fully qualified address that you want to visit. Um, never open an attachment from somebody that you don't know. Never, ever, ever open an attachment without having your Windows Firewall on, Defender, Trend Micro, any number of antiviruses out that, that are out there that can scan these files in real time. We've covered the phishing scams. We've covered ways you can avoid. Uh, the biggest one is never, ever open attachments from people you don't know. That's the biggest. And what, what would you do if uh, you receive an email from someone you do know? that has an attachment. Like you were saying your situation earlier with um, your uh, niece's mother sending in, let's say maybe a, a zip file that could contain pictures. Uh, what are some things you could do to just make sure that that is a legit email? Sure, so if it's an attachment you aren't expecting, you, you can contact the sender of the email and say, hey, look, I just got this email. It looks like it came from you. Can you tell me what the attachment is? Um, that's that's obviously the best way to, to, to go about that. Um, if it is a file that you are expecting, again, um, make sure your virus scanners are on, do the basic level of protection. Um, and there, 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 there will be times that you are even expecting an attachment and it, 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 it could have malware in it, it could have scripts that are running inside of the PDF file. So um, basic basic awareness is, is, is really what it comes down to. I mean, you have to train yourself to, oh, don't just open every email you get and get excited that there's pictures of your niece in there. You, right. you have to think twice or three times about it. And that's maybe one of the more unfortunate things because the internet is sure. you know, considered it's a convenience. Yes. You can get those pictures without having to go to someone's house or having to go get Absolutely. them developed. But um, and especially right now, it just means that uh, just double check to see if you've received. If you're not someone who frequently checks your bank account for the deposit, uh, maybe start this year uh, just to make sure if you um, – have been targeted. Absolutely, and with the uh, IRS deposit scam that's going on right now, a lot of the refunds are really small amounts, a couple hundred dollars. A lot of folks would not even notice. So be vigilant. Be vigilant. Well, Jamie, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. We hope to hear from you soon all again. Right. Um, that'll be it for today. We'll see you all next time on the Taxing Subjects Podcast. 